ever blaze. Sophie did the only thing she could think of. She fainted, or pretended to, anyway. She fell into Grady's arms, forcing herself to stay limped as everyone shuffled around her. Only when she heard Elwyn talking about a jolting elixir did she slowly groan back to life. Sorry, I don't know what happened, she mumbled, realizing with each word how hard her head was throbbing. The buzzing static had turned to a crashing waterfall. I was trying to concentrate and everything shut down. Elwyn helped her sit up and when the head rushed clear, cleared, she stole a quick glance at Magnet Lido. He nodded only once, not really a nod at all. But clearly, he knew she'd hurt him and he was going to protect her secret. Here, Elwyn said, handling her a bottle of, handing her a bottle of youth and flashing a yellow orb around her forehead. You're severely dehydrated. She downed the bottle in one long gulp and it helped a little. But her brain still felt like the verminion was chewing on it. Straining to hear that thought had drained every ounce of her strength. She didn't know how she could ever recreate it. We could. We should take this contraption off now, before it does any permanent damage, Elwin muttered. He reached for the band, but Dex grabbed his wrist to stop him. Once the restrictor has been activated, you can't remove it unless you deactivate it first. That's why they had me take it off the first time. Or else what? Alden asked. I'm not sure. It could be anything from partial brain damage to insanity. It's a security feature they asked me to give it, so the person being restricted doesn't have control. Great, Sophie grumbled. Leave it to Dex to be thorough while sealing her misery. I'm so sorry, he told her for what felt like the billionth time. I'll take it off right now. You'll do nothing of that sort. In fact, your services are no longer needed. Counselor M. Emery dragged him toward the door. Know this, Mr. Disney. If you make any change to the device or its effect on her, your entire family will be charged with treason. He shoved Dex into the goblin's standing guard, locking him outside before he could respond. How do you know the restrictor is not harming her? Grady demanded. This is completely untested technology developed by a 13-year-old boy. You have no idea what effect it's going to have in a few days or weeks. We'll monitor her progress closely, Counselor Emery promised, as I'm certain you will as well. She already keeps Elwin on standby, doesn't she? You dare to make jokes, Elwin started, but Sophie cut him off. I'm kind of queasy, Elwin. Is there anything you can give me? The nausea was actually the least of her problems, but she needed to keep Elwin distracted. Enough people she cared about were facing exile already. Elwin dug through his satchel, handing her, handing her at least a dozen elixirs and explaining how to administer them. When he was done, he flashed a green orb around Sophie's face, studying her for a long time before he said, I almost don't want to say this, but she seems okay. She'll probably need regular supplements since this puts her under much heavier strain, but her vitals are holding steady. Wonderful, Counselor Emery said, so pleased with himself. Sorry, the smile off his face. Perhaps Sophie could go home and rest then, Counselor Tarek said quietly. He avoided Sophie's gaze as he added, It's been a long day for all of us. It has, Counselor Emery agreed, and her punishment is complete, so we can dismiss the assembly without her. Wait, people are still here? Sophie asked. Of course, Counselor Alina said, smoothing her hair in one of the mirrors. They're waiting for the final update. Sophie could imagine them standing there, judging her, laughing at her, and that was only the beginning. Everyone knew about this, and if they didn't, her ugly circlet would quickly give her away. She wasn't the girl who was taken anymore. She was talentless. I need to go, she told Grady, struggling to her feet. Her legs could barely hold her, but she refused to let anyone carry her out of there. She would not let the council think they broke, they'd broken her. She held her head high as Edeline created a pat, and the last thing she saw as she stepped into the light was Magnet Lido giving her a quick wink. Sophie made it to her bedroom before the tears hit, but once they started, she couldn't stop them. She didn't even want to. She collapsed on her bed and burrowed under the covers, wishing she could build a nest and never leave, never have to face the world as the freak girl with restricted abilities. It didn't matter that she'd been able to hear Magnet Lido. She'd nearly broken her brain to do it. But what would she do without her abilities? No one would want anything to do with her now. 
not her friends, not the black swan, not Grady and Adeline, and she couldn't blame them. She didn't want anything to do with herself. The sobs turned to chokes, bruising her from the inside out until Adeline pulled back the covers and pressed a warm, sweet cup against Sophie's lips. She knew it was slumberberry tea even before she saw the purple color and she drank it gladly, downing the whole thing and hoping it knocked her out for a few years, decades, the rest of eternity. She strangled Ella as warm fluff swelled inside her mind like her brain was spinning into cotton candy. Still, the softness couldn't erase the sting of the cold metal circlet cutting into her skin, and she tossed and turned and failed to find a comfortable position against her pillow until the drug drugged her away from the pain. She woke up later and didn't bother opening her eyes. Her neck ached, and her forehead was bruised and her pillow was soggy with drool. Adeline tried to get her to eat something, but she wasn't hungry. All she wanted was more tea. She sunk back into the cotton mine candy, ignoring the voices that danced through her fluffy dreams. She couldn't tell if they were real or imagined, but she heard Elwyn worrying about her brain, Dex apologizing over and over again, Kif insisting sil silver sick circlets were the hot new trend, Bianna asking if she could help, Fitz promising he was there if she needed him, and Grady and Adeline begging, begging, begging her to wake. She knew everyone needed her to be brave, but she needed to stay far, far away. So she dove deeper into her drug-induced haze, wishing she could find her way back to the nook in her mind and stay there forever. She'd been happy there, safe. But all too soon, the tea wore off again, and this time, when she asked for more, Edeline wouldn't give it to her. You're scaring me, Sophie, she whispered, wiping the sticky hair off Sophie's forehead. Elwyn doesn't think the circlet is hurting you, except for the abrasions on your skin and is working on a cream for those. But is there something he's missing? Are you sick? Sophie pulled the covers over her head. It's okay to be angry, Grady said from somewhere in the room. What the council has done to you is unspeakable. I resigned my position as emissary yesterday. You did? Sophie asked. Yep. Alden was also ready to resign, but we decided to keep someone on the inside, so he's staying for now, but that might change. She slid her covers back and opened her eyes, regretting it when blinding light crashed into her brain. She curled up in a ball, rocking through the pain as Grady and Edeline held her as tight as they could. I'm so sorry, Edeline whispered. If I could wear the circlet for you, I would. I'd rather make the counselors run off a cliff. Grady's voice was so dark. Sophie believed him, which was exactly what she'd been trying to avoid when she'd agreed to horrible circlet in the first place. Please, she whispered, slowly lifting her heavy head. Please don't do anything crazy over me. I'm not worth it. What? Grady asked as Edeline pulled her closer again. I'm not worth it. Sophie repeated, taking a deep breath to give her the strength to say the rest. I'm a failed experiment, Okay. The black swan made me to do something. I don't know what, but it doesn't matter now because I'll never be able to do it and the whole thing is a waste. I bet if you ask them, they'd say the same thing. I don't care what the black swan created you for, Adeline told her. I don't care if you dropped out of the sky or floated on the beach in an egg and hatched. You're still my daughter and I will always love you, no matter what. Fresh tears burned Sophie's eyes. You don't wish you could get rid of me now? Is that really what you think? Edeline asked. Sophie hung her head, pointing to her circlet. Who wants a frick in their family? The fricks are the counselors who thought this was an acceptable punishment. Grady growled. But I promise, Sophie, nothing will ever make us not want you in our family. Nothing. But I keep ruining your lives. No, you made our lives worth living again. Adeline promised, you are a strong, beautiful, amazing girl, and nothing about this. She traced a finger across the circlet. We'll never change that. You will still be our daughter, and we will still love you, because you remind you of Jolie. The words stung her tongue, and Sophie wished she could drag them back in, especially when she saw their stunned faces. Never mind, I shouldn't have. Yes, you should. Grady said, squeak, squeezing her shoulders to stop her from turning away. Sophie, I, we, never meant to compare you to Jolie. 
Yes, you remind us of her in certain small ways, but only because we love you so, so much. And what we love is you. You know that, right? A sniffle was the only answer Sophie could come up with. Edeline brushed a tear off Sophie's cheek. Please, Sophie, you have to believe us. We want you, only you, okay? And that's never going to change. Never. Sophie swallowed a sob, feeling the knots tangled inside her, loosened as she whispered. You know what I want? What? Grady asked a mom, a mom and dad. She said the last words as a test, not sure how they'd feel, but they felt right, so right, especially when Grady and Edeline whispered, that's what we're here for. No matter what, Edeline added. No matter what, Sophie repeated. She pulled them close, needing to do this right. I love you, mom, she whispered. I love you, dad. We love you too. They both told her, their voices dissolving into sobs. Sophie had no idea how long they sat holding one another or how much time had passed since the night the council sentenced her. But she was finally ready to face the next day. It was a good thing because when she, show when she showered and dressed and slowly made her way downstairs, Grady and Edeline weren't alone. Sander was waiting for her. So were Fitz and Bianna and Keith. Sophie didn't need to ask why they were there. She could see the tiny scrolls in their hands, each sealed with the sign of this one. Oh, <gasps> okay.